Hello and welcome to this first tutorial in using WebMap at home. What I'm going to begin with is by giving you a brief uh, overview of uh, Space Syntax and WebMap at home and show you some of the facilities that are available and then other uh, tutorials will show you some of the more facilities in greater detail. So I've just launched WebMap at home and I'm going to start off by loading in a classic axial map um, this is one is London. So the first thing I'm going to demonstrate here is the ability to zoom. And here we have a map of central London. Um, this is very much the kind of traditional map that um, geographers kind of work with. It's a map of space. So this line here, for example, represents Oxford Street. This line uh, represents the uh, traffic around Regent's Park and uh, the, uh, tr the uh, access to London Zoo. Um, then you've got uh, other major roads and over here we have the City of London and this uh, edge here represents the River uh, River Thames. So this is generally what people have when they uh, look at uh, urban data. They just have a series of sort of spatial representations, a series of axial lines in this particular case. And we'll come to the definition of axial line later. What can you really understand from this map? Um, what can you... Um, uh, what can you decide? For example, if you just looked at this map, where are the busy streets? Where are the quiet streets? Where are the back streets? Where are the neighbourhoods? Well, let's process it and see what uh, the uh, syntactical processing suggests. Now, while that's happening, I'm just going to load up the preferences and change the background colour to black. And I'm going to look at uh, integration. So integration is one of the classic measures of space syntax. And this is a measure of the global movement through London, um, assuming this is an accurate map of London. Um, what we see here is that uh, Oxford Street pops out as the reddest street. Now, you saw in the black and white version exactly what the machine knew. It knew that there was a street here, it knew there was a connection, but it didn't know anything else about Oxford Street. <coughs> um, but by processing it via integration, it actually uh, decides that this is the most central street in London. And I'll come back to a be better description of how syn space syntax processes this later on. Equally, we have streets like uh, Tottenham Court Road coming out as major integrators. Um, and uh, what we see here are the map the numbers of space syntax that have just been cast back into colour. Let's zoom out slightly. And this is a measure of centrality. So basically this is just saying if this was a city this size, um, what would be uh, with this extent? What's the most central street and what's the most peripheral street? Um, globally this would say this is the busiest car street for example. What we can do with space syntax is reduce the um, radius to radius 3 integration and this gives us a better description of what things are like locally. Let's uh, zoom in a bit more. Uh, so again, Oxford Street is still the busiest street. Like That kind of correlates with reality. This is a busy shopping street. Um, we see uh, streets like Tottenham Court Road again are very busy streets and again they're, they're actually quite busy uh, shopping streets. We can move up here to uh, the Camden region and we see that the uh, street in Camden is also a busy pedestrian footfall street. Um, if we go to one of the classic areas of space syntax this area is known as Barnsbury. Over here if you have a map of London this is Islington this is a very kind of busy um, busy hip and quite pricey area. We can see that the yellows and brighter greens pick out the busier streets and then the blue pick out the um, cut off darker uh, cut off and less busy streets so for example this is a historic map so this is actually king's cross as it was before the redevelopment uh, we can see this street here is actually very quiet very dead street which actually it actually historically was Okay, we have other measures in uh, WebMap Home. For example, we have uh, fractional integration. So this gives you a measure of um, integration 
but this time based on angle of axial line incident incidence so for example if we jump from integration you see that this street which is uh, Oxford Street, New Oxford Street, then goes into Theobald Street and it kind of dies off pretty quickly. With um, fractional integration, if I uh, log it, you see that this street remains this busy street and that's because of um, uh, the various computational processes involved but it actually reflects the kind of meandering nature of these streets and how they function in the larger system. This stuff has then then been developed onto the more angular uh, measurements, which are the basis of uh, segmental analysis. Um, so what facilities have we generally got in WebMapper Home? Firstly, obviously, we have the process to um, process the uh, axial map via doing it. We have uh, facilities for creating axial maps, and we have facilities for um, analyzing the data of those axial maps. Let me briefly go through for some of the facilities. Um, we have a line inspector. This just tells us the uh, information about that particular line. So let's pick, let's go back to uh, Oxford Street. Uh, let's pick quite street. So this actually just gives you the individual values for that particular axial line. We have a histogram and this looks at all the axial lines and gives you a distribution of the various values. So here we see there's a large number of cutoff streets and a small number of very uh, integrated streets. Let's uh, not log that. Uh, this legend gives you a value of what the colours mean. Um, the colours are inverted here so they actually go from minus number to minus number and that makes the most segregated one blue and the most integrated one red. Sometimes you want to invert that and we can actually just do that by reversing this. If we look at the histogram, we see now red is the more busy one. And we see the numbers are positive and this, at this point the map is inverted. So blue, blue is most integrated and red is most segregated. Um, there are lots of tools here for playing with the colour scheme of the axial map and that can be quite useful in terms of understanding what's going on. For example, we can do a similar one looking at the reciprocal. So again, this inverts the colour scheme, but if we look at the histogram, it squeezes the histogram in a different way. Um, let's actually do both simultaneously. Uh, there we go. Uh, and again, you can see here we actually have more... Um, uh, more integrated lines and that basically allows us to look at the differentiation of the blue lines with a bit more detail. You can actually see some of the subtle variations in the uh, segregated lines. Um, let's just go back to the normal measurements. We also have scattergrams. So for example one of the um, more important measurements in space syntax is the idea of uh, intelligibility. This scattergram allows us to um, uh, look at the distribution of axial lines. So for example, each node here is represents a certain degree of connectivity and as, uh, the vertical axis is the certain degree of integration. So here, for example, we have a street which is both highly integrated and highly connected. I'm just going to switch back to black, uh, the um, uh, color on black mode and you'll see the um, selection a bit easier. See, it's got black handles here. So not surprisingly, um, we can see that the most integrated line is also the most connected. Now, a lot of people actually confuse the two together. They actually say the most uh, connected line is the most central. Uh, and actually, it's not true. For example, this line is uh, highly connected, but highly um, segregated. Let's select that one, and we'll just zoom out a bit so we can see it. Let's play hunt the axial line. Oh, here we go, it's down here. Um, and that is a high street. I think that's Kings Road, if I'm guessing right. Um, so Kings Road is highly connected, but in this case, it's very on the edge, so that it's actually quite segregated. Um, so there's no strict relationship between connectivity, number of connections, and how important you are in the system. And that's an important uh, concept we can come back to later. 
let's uh, we can also select groups of lines and actually find out where they are so this works both ways if you select something here and cause this to refresh you will actually see it um, let's just select this one and cause this one to refresh you'll see it gets selected here okay the reflection process the selection and refresh process isn't perfect but uh, you can manage it and it's a piece of free experimental software what do you expect um, up here we have the navigator and this allows us to walk around the axial map which is particularly good if you're very strongly zoomed in and you want to uh, investigate various pieces Along with the scattergram, we have a table view, and this basically just tells you what the um, the values are in a sorted table. This is a bit like one one column in a spreadsheet, and you can switch columns to look at the various numbers in detail. Uh, there's a column calculator, and this allows you to do calculations on columns. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to multiply integration by another number let's say connectivity okay so let's go back up here and look at the map by connectivity so this is the number of connections you have we'll zoom out again give it a bit of a view and this is going back to front so it's making the most connected blue so what we'll do is we'll reverse that process and now the most connected is the red lines um, and uh, with the column calculator you can actually say multiply you can actually say for example create the um, square of connectivity so let's take um, integration connectivity uh, c squared and we're going to multiply it by connectivity um, uh, and then um, yeah and unfortunately I can't see the button okay we'll come back to this when I can zoom the world out um, there are other controls for example what radius uh, X is what's the fractional radius we'll come back to that in later on backgrounds is quite important when you come to actually creating the axial map this basically allows you to have an, an image that you can draw on top of there are layers uh, and again we'll come back to that in another, le uh, another um, lesson connections actually allows you to uh, look at the kind of uh, connectivity between lines uh, there's an optimizer and the intelligent surface they're quite experimental and quite advanced um, and finally we'll just come back to document info basically uh, axman had this uh, meta information system that allowed you to actually store information about the particular line with the file itself so it wasn't get lost at the top here we have a number of um, calculations that can get done we'll cover those in a later um, lesson we can generate axial maps and there are a variety of tools to help you um, drill down into the data and explore the information you've got okay well um, that's quite a lot to be going on with um, and we'll uh, come back to a lot of these uh, 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 facilities in a uh, later lesson. Thanks for watching.